Learn tonight's latest breaking news surrounding Gavardio as currently we are in advanced negotiations to sign the defender for 90 million euros. Following this, we have big updates on Frankie de Jong. Wesley Fofana officially signs as a Chelsea player, as well as Hudson Odoi going on loan to Leverkusen, and a very unique deal we're looking to strike with Santos FC, which I think you guys will find very interesting. So we have a ton of things to break down and discuss. Before I continue on though, of course you guys stay tuned for the match review, which will get released later tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for all the love and getting straight into things. So now let's start with things and let's discuss this news coming out from Brazil. Now this report comes from journalist Jorge Nicola, who's been the main guy reporting all the latest news involving Endrick. And essentially, he's reporting that we are trying to strike a deal with Santos to get access to their best talents. This is Santos FC. They produce Neymar, Alexandro, players like um, Danilo, plus many, many more. So for me, this is an incredible sign of intent we're showing. And we're very serious about potentially collecting some of the world's finest talents to build a future-proof long-term team with so let's continue on essentially with this deal we're hoping to get priority to all the athletes coming out from their academy so this means that we are prepared to pay a massive premium of course to make sure that we can strike this deal through so basically this means that we want to be informed in case any offers are made for any athletes any talents coming out from santos now this very same journalist has come out to state that Santos's president has basically shot down the news saying that this is fake news. However, the journalist is very adamant based on his very close sources and ties that this is something currently happening behind the scenes. And naturally with a deal like this, you don't want to leak things. You don't want to make this public whatsoever. For me, this is incredibly exciting. It's normally been quite difficult for us to actually secure talents from South America. Now, since Roman Sokova, we haven't necessarily seen so many South American talents playing for us but it does seem like the future will change quite a lot and we want to make sure that we have access to some of the world's finest talents. So, you guys, share your thoughts and opinions. How do you find this news? Let us all know below. Now, before we continue on, today's video was brought to you by friends of the channel in OneFootball. OneFootball is the app to have as the trans window is now drawing to its end tomorrow evening. You'd imagine that so many deals are still yet to be completed. We'll get some serious deals done before the window ends. Things are looking very, very exciting. And with one football, you can stay up to date with all the latest news dropping around our club on Giants of Deadline Day. And of course, follow all the latest news across Europe as well too to stay up to date to all things Giants of Deadline Day. Honestly, you guys, it's very quick, convenient, and I guarantee during the start of your mornings, this will be the first thing you've opened up to. Of course, get your latest football fix before you start your day. So you guys, try it out for yourselves. It's literally in the description, free and I guarantee you guys will find it very handy. So hope you enjoy and getting back to the video. So right now, let's discuss the latest news on Wesley Fofana. And that's it, you guys. It's over, it's done. He today signs officially as a Chelsea player. And tomorrow, all we have to do is wait for that official announcement to come. And I hope that's gonna be like a bad boy announcement because this deal is taking so long to get done. It's taken over one month. So in the end, we've secured the player we wanted. Uh, you know that Tuchel's been a massive admirer for many years. And with this emphasis on signing top class young players, you know, for Fana, does fall in line with your Gavardios plus many others as well too. It's very, very exciting. And today, all paperwork is now complete. And of course, all medicals are now complete as well too. So it's literally flying back to Cobham now as we speak. Uh, earlier today, Leicester did confirm their replacement by signing Star Dreams uh, Belgium international defender, Vote Fayesh, if I'm saying his name right, I'm not too sure. So they've got some money to play with and hopefully bring in some additions to strengthen their team. So, of course, big day tomorrow, we officially announced Mercy Fofana. How do you guys feel about this news? Does it still feel quite surreal that we've actually secured Fofana? Let us all know below. And right now, let's discuss the breaking news surrounding Yoshiko Gavadio. Now, I guarantee that absolutely no one saw this news coming whatsoever. This news was confirmed and made official by none other than Fabrizio Romano, and he reveals that we are currently in advanced talks to sign Gavardio, and a deal now is very, very close. Now, this deal for Gavardio will cost around 90 million euros. That's around 77 million pounds. So this is some serious money that we're looking to spend. However, there is one important factor behind this deal, and that is that we won't actually have the player until next summer. So essentially we're doing something that's quite similar to what Liverpool did when they signed Naby Keita all those years back. They agreed to sign Keita one season in advance. So 
It makes sense that we're doing something quite similar and you can imagine why we keep things quite secret because we don't want to announce anything to any of our competitors and the fact that we have the money now to sign them this summer to get ready for him for next summer makes things even easier knowing the fact that he'll come to us next summer with plenty of time to have pre-season and of course have more time to understand Tuchel's way of playing. Now this news is broken, what does this actually mean? I mean? Right now I have so many thoughts and questions behind what the hell is actually going on. Of course we're looking to secure our top targets years in advance that tells you everything you need to know about the long term projects being built at Chelsea FC. But still, I have some initial thoughts. I think Vardio's capture does kind of signify that we should expect to see a back three set up for the foreseeable future. And on top of that too, it's got question marks around the future surrounding Levi Cole because he hasn't even really been given an opportunity to show what he can do. And it kind of contradicts all the reports I was reading and you guys were reading too during last season when it was kind of reported that Tuchel was looking to turn to him and give him an opportunity. So the fact that we're looking to sign someone that's just one year older than him for around 90 million euros doesn't really paint a very confident future around Levi Cole because he plays exactly in the same position and I just don't see both players getting enough game time to really be able to really maximize their potential. It's obvious that Tuchel really loves Gavardio. It has been reported for many, many months now. So now he has the opportunity to build a team in his very own image. It seems like Tuchel really is taken out to the letter of the law and is looking to sign the players that he wants. So I guess that's what we expect from our manager. But it's quite disappointing for me personally, though, in my opinion, that Levi Cole isn't really being given an opportunity considering that he's one of the premium talents in this country. So time will tell. We have to see what happens. But let's talk more on Gavardio. Now, he plays on the left-hand side of a back three. He can play as a left-back as well too. And for me, I kind of see him as like a, a full-back essentially based on just how progressive this guy is down the left-hand side. Now, in terms of his ball-playing ability and his progression down the left-hand side, he's one of the best in the Bundesliga and he's literally only just signed and been at Leipzig for one year. So that tells you everything you need to know about his potential and his ability. He's very composed and he's very confident in his ball playing skills. I mean, for example, he will carry that ball forwards. And this is why I draw comparisons to him being like a fullback, essentially. But when you have a defender like him who's able to step out with the ball, all that does is create better passing angles and opportunities to help you play out from the back. We've needed that natural left footed player for a long time now, and Gavardio does fit that to an absolute T. Like Fafana, they're both young players that don't have any major weakness in their game. In terms of their overall game at their age currently, they do a lot of things to a very good level. And these are the multiple types of players that can become anything they want and they get better as they master the overall craft and game. It seems like the future now is set to be Gavardi on the left hand side, Koulibaly in the middle and Fofan on the right hand side. Now Levi Kowal can still have a place in this team. You'd imagine Koulibaly, Kowal, Fofana, Gavardi, that's a potent set of defenders to have and you know Koval still has that ability to make something happen for himself once he's able to break into that Brighton team and become a mainstay in their defence. That is his challenge and test for the season and if he does that things will look better for him for next season. Still though to end my thoughts a part of me wishes that we are spending this money now instead on a DM or even Nkunku but the reality is we'll probably still have money to blow and spend on Nkunku for next summer, knowing the fact that we're only signing a Bemiang to act as a stopgap replacement. So we're doing big things in this window and we're already getting big things done in the following window. This is one of the most exciting periods at the club in, in how many years? I can't wait to see what happens. So before I end things, how do you guys find this news? Share your thoughts and opinions. Are you excited at seeing Gavardio here for next season? Let us all know. And right now, let's briefly discuss the updates surrounding Frankie de Jong. And this report comes from Gerard Romero from Twitch. And we do know that this summer in particular, he has been quite a good spokesperson for Barcelona in terms of dropping that breaking news. And he drops this. He, he reports that we've made a salary offer of 15.4 million net towards Frankie de Jong. Now, we know currently he's in London with his partner on holiday, which is way too convenient to just fully be the case. Uh, we're not stupid here. And it was reported that we have made this proposal today just a few hours earlier back. Tomorrow is deadline day and it's set to be a busy and crazy period. We could get two players signed additionally on top of Wesley Fofana and it seems like we're close now to capturing moves from Aubameyang and potentially Frankie de Jong as well too. Let's see what happens, but I think we have one thing going in our favour and that's the fact that we can offer so much money towards Frankie de Jong. 
We have to remember this, ever since De Jong has accepted taking deferred payments, he's only earned 4 million currently from Barcelona. He still owes the rest of the money deferred to him as well as his new wages for the new year. So Barca are looking to owe around like 36 million which is a crazy amount of money and it's not a surprise whether they're really looking forward to moving him on as discreetly as possible. So let's see what tomorrow brings. But knowing Frank De Jong is currently in London, something big is on the horizon. But right now, let's end things by discussing Hudson Adoy completing a long move for one year at Bayer Leverkusen. We got some interesting news, and this came from the club's official website. So there is a clause inserted in Hudson Adoy's loan, which means that we could recall the player back in January. So I'd imagine that we pay a fee, of course, to make that happen. And I guess we're safeguarding ourselves, as we remember. When we got to last January, we were desperately trying to get Emerson to return back to the club, which was basically impossible because there was no recall clause inserted in that loan deal. So we're not looking to make the same mistake with Hudson Odoi. I'm hoping that it doesn't fall down to that. I don't want to see Hudson Odoi returning back on loan. I'm hoping that he has a successful loan spell on the left hand side at Bayer Leverkusen and does big things in Europe and domestically in the Bundesliga as well, too. If he has a big year, he can come back and then his Chelsea career comes back instantly just like that. So good luck to Hudson Odoi. I will be following the player and I will be looking to do a loan report now to follow all of our players and our potential new signings as well for the following season. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Smash the like button. Don't forget to watch the match if you're coming out later tonight as well too. And on that note, I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lion CV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.